The solution to this Hanayama black chain link puzzle is absolutely genius and it's one that I was actually able to find on my own. First of all, woo, thank you. Second of all, meh. But uh, third of all, as you know, maybe you don't know, if you don't know, this puzzle I got for Christmas recently and I've been playing around with it for a little bit and I actually was able to find the solution. As you can see, I've cleared off my desk over here, which is not very clean very often. So you know I'm gonna give you a little rundown of my process and what went into solving this so you can solve it for yourself or just see how it works. With all that out of the way, if you are ready to spoil all the mystery and mystery behind how this puzzle works, let's go over to the desk. Okay, so the first thing I noticed when I sat down to play with this puzzle the first time is that despite how it first appears, all three pieces are actually different. Now, and you notice as well that they are kind of marked like numbered, so there's the two piece, the three piece, and the one piece, so they're in the order one, two, three right now. And again, the order that I just mentioned is something else that is important. So the first thing you'll notice is that the number two piece is like the most normal. It has, you know, symmetrical components on both sides and it looks as you would expect. The number one and three pieces, however, you see the number one piece has this little indentation cut out, which will come in handy. And I guess as you're solving this, you assume that could be part of the solution. And then the third piece has this cut out. So now being familiar with the pieces, we can go into trying to get them apart. So the first thing I realized when solving this puzzle was that the pieces can actually switch orders. So right now we have this chain in the one, two, three pattern, but by passing links through each other and undoing them, you can rearrange that order. Now, the next thing is that when you do pass pieces through each other, so here's the number one and number three piece passing through each other, whichever pieces you use to undo this mumbo jumbo mess, those will become the two ends of the chain. So the idea is that we know the number one piece has a flaw in it, and we know the number three piece has that flaw in it. So if we can get those two pieces next to each other, since in the order one, two, three, one and three are next to each other, maybe we can combine those flaws and that can be part of the solution. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're going to unlink the one and two piece and that will make one and two the endpoints of the chain and that will leave the three piece in the middle. And we're gonna do it in a way that will allow this flaw and this flaw to line up properly. So if we're kind of visualizing here, if I'm gonna undo sorry, the one and two piece. We can see how one is linked to the chain right now. And if I'm gonna pass this one through the two piece, see how with the one flaw here and the three flaw here, now we can just, you know, let it come apart. We're back into the chain, but we see we've moved three to the middle and we have the one piece flaw right near the three piece flaw. And that's pretty much the entire solution because lining up these two flaws, if I can get it up nice and close, you can see here, lining up these two flaws together, see how that allows the one piece to come flat with this little protrusion part here. Well, now we can take the two piece and it can simply slide right out and then the one piece can slide out of the three piece. And it's as simple as that, but no matter how simple that looked, it's a lot of trial and error because there's so many options in terms of how you can arrange the pieces and you never really know it's right until it's right and then it feels obvious. So again, here's the one and three pieces. Now, obviously if there's two together, we can link them nice and easily. And inserting the flaws together, we can get the second piece in. There we go. So see how having the flaws lined up just leaves enough clearance for this piece to go in there. Now that's what makes this so difficult is in any other instance, like let's say I'm trying to get these apart this way, this number two link just does not allow it to happen. There's just no way, there's no room. And the only way there's enough room for a piece to slide past another is by lining those two flaws up. 
So putting it back into its regular state, we know that first we can pass any two links through each other, and then we know that whichever two links we unlink will become the endpoints. So if we want it one, two, three, then we want to unlink the one and three pieces, like so. And now if we look, we've got the one, two, and three link back in order, or three, two, one, same difference. Again, the key is that you unlink and relink so that the chain has the three and one next to each other, and then you can line up those flaws to get the two piece out. Line up those flaws, and that's how you slip that last piece out. Super exciting, super genius solution, because like I said, when you get this in your hands, it is so much more frustrating than you think. As always, Leave a like and subscribe and comment if you got any thoughts and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.